Alright guys, today on what to do, we are going to cover hydraulic pumps. I have a Bobcat Predator Pro Zero Turn in the shop, and the right side hydraulics, there's nothing. It's just going in circles, okay? So, my job here is to save my company some money, so we're not dumping out an additional $700, $800 for these gears. The price they charge for some of these is ridiculous. Some of them go in the thousands of dollars. But the truth of the matter is, with a little bit of knowledge and follow this video you might be able to save your pump and 80 percent of the time you can and you don't even have to be a mechanic you just need a couple basic household tools that you'll have laying around and i'm going to show you what to look for and possibly get your machine up and running again without having to dish out all that money all right so i'm going to try to save my boss 600 dollars right now and you can do this in as little as probably 30 minutes maybe less all right let's get into it all right, so this particular model here, this is the uh, Bobcat Predator Pro. And I already have the, uh, this has two hydro gears here. All right, they work independently with each other. This one is the one I just took out. All right, I did not cover the tutorial of taking it out. But I can tell you the biggest, biggest headache I had was taking the pulley off the bottom of the machine down there because the two bolts that hold the hydro gear go through here and here. And you got to get that pulley off one to uh, pull the gear out of here. But two, the uh, nuts that go to these bolts right here are hidden beneath that pulley. So the pulley's gotta come off and you're gonna need a puller, a proper puller to pull that off. But that's not why you're here. Let's get into the hydro gear. This is a hydro gear that is going to go into that machine, okay? And I basically had a bunch of these laying around. So what I did was cleaned it all up and uh, I ripped apart each of the motors to uh, find good pieces in each of them and reassemble it back together. So what you want to do and what you want to look for on your gear first is uh, understanding, okay? So this here is your charge pump, all right? And underneath of this, there is a little gear that will rotate around, which basically charges your pump and it helps build up that pressure, okay? So one of the things you can look for is by taking this off I already have these loose be very very careful when you pull this up there is going to be a little spring and a ball in there all right so when you pull this off this might be a little bit tight at first what you do is get yourself just a, a little a little hammer or something metal and tap this to the side a couple of times this will free up Okay, don't smack it real hard, but tap it lightly until, it's, until you see it come loose. Now, when you pull this up, go real gentle. There's your spring right there. Okay, and here is the bottom. You want to examine this here, <clears throat> and I apologize for the, the camera. My uh, camera has just got grease caked on it, and I can't get it cleaned up. But just examine this here. Make sure there's no big digs. There's nothing in here, because when you use dirty hydraulic fluid and it gets in here, it's going to spin around and around and around, and it's just going to score this all up, which basically is going to prevent you from building that pressure because your fluids are going to start uh, blowing by in there, so to speak. And um, take your spring and put this in a really safe place. All right, see how this just spins around? You should be able to spin this pretty freely. And you can see by the way this spins, it goes up and it comes down. It goes up and it comes down. And what that's doing is it's charging that that gear there. It's, this is helping build your pressure there, okay? So if yours is seized up, and I have one here that I ripped apart, and I'm keeping these out for examples, all right? Um, this particular gear, I have two gears here, one here and one here, and I'm gonna show you the problems and identify them. So if we go to the charge pump on this one, this gear, I am unable to spin this. Let me try to set my camera down to show you. All right, so this, you can see, I can't spin this gear around in there. It goes like half a turn and then it seizes up. All right, now our new one, again, up here, I just showed you. Let me show you what it's supposed to do. I can get it off of here, all right. See how that just goes right around? It can just spin that freely. All right, so that's one of the problems you may have with your pump. 
when you get stuff inside your hydraulic oil, all it takes is one little piece of dirt to get in there and score all this up and prevent this from spinning. So check that first. If yours is not spinning, you're just going to take off that charge pump, which is these two bolts and your charge pump head here. Okay, so you would pull that off and that will allow you access to this. And if just this is gone, you can possibly, if you don't have an extra pump around, and you can see if the one in there is good, you can just order this here, okay? But chances are, if this is locked up because there was dirt in there, you might want to disassemble the rest of your pump and clean it out and make sure nothing else is seized up. And that's what we'll get into now. Okay, so we know that our charge pump here is good. So we're going to remove this. All right, and we will just, this just slides straight up. It's a spline right there, okay? So you're just gonna pull that straight up. All right, now, moving on. You're gonna need a 916 to take these four off. When you take these four off, this head here should pop up in the air because there's this little, it looks like an old uh, magazine out of an old uh, handgun, right? Where you put the bullets in. Well, these are spring activated. So these right now are compressed with that head. And when you undo those bolts, it's gonna pop. And it's going to push this head up. Now, if it doesn't come springing up, chances are you're gonna have one of these that is seized like this one. And we'll get back to that in a second. Let's take these bolts off. Now that you've examined this, we're gonna go a little bit deeper. All right, I'm gonna hold the camera up here because I don't have a tripod, but we're gonna take these bolts out. And if you watch that head, it should pop up in the air. All right, after this one, this should pop up. Let me put the camera on here. Come on, get on there. All right, ready? See? See that? See how it popped up? That's telling me that the shoes in there are more than likely good. You're taking your bolts off and it doesn't pop up in the air like that then you know before you even remove this that there's something else that's bound up in there all right but let's pull these four bolts out try to lift this straight up if you can you may have to wiggle a little bit there we go all right first thing you want to do is i know it's hard to see here is just examine this See, make sure that this isn't all scored up. You might see some little tiny swirls in it. That's normal. Uh, but just make sure there's no really big digs. You don't see any chunks of metal. But since you have this off, you probably want to get some air and uh, blow it in there. Just in case there's any debris or whatever inside of there. All right. So let's set this down here. What you want to do is turn this thing now upside down and let this fall out into your hand. And I got to set the camera down to show you that. Now I have this in a vise, but it's not in the vise too tight. You don't want to crank this vise too tight because you don't want to crack your casing here. <clears throat> uh, but I'm going to loosen this up just a hair. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my hand on top of this and I'm going to turn this upside down. So now that you have this out, you want to examine this. Okay, this is one of the things that goes bad also. You may find that one of these is stuck in a down position and it's seized up okay you can get dirt and stuff inside of there and it can prevent that from springing back up which in return is going to prevent your mower from building the pressure that it needs all right so basically what this does there's a swash plate in there and i'll show you in a second but this sits on that swash plate all right and it goes around like that and you can see it's compressing those springs in as it turns that is building your pressure okay so all of these need to be operating and they need to be in the up position if they're completely down it's seized up and this is basically just spinning inside of your hydro gear and it's not building any pressure all right now i'm going to show you what one looks like that's seized up on this particular pump here when i took this one out these you can see they're i can't even push them they are jammed up in there they're seized up now 
Let me get some better light. There is a way that you can possibly un unseize these and uh, hope that it didn't score up the, the walls inside to where you can reuse it. Okay, but you can see these are all these are all okay, but these two here are stuck. Now, if this is the pro the problem with yours, what you can try to do to unseize these, and you have to be really careful because you don't want to do damage down here either. All right, this one is got some really heavy scoring on it, so this is not salvageable. But and uh, so one of these just fell out. So that's. Probably good that it did. I wanted to show you. So if you're taking this out and these fall out, don't panic. Um, they will come apart just like that. This part here, uh, your your wider part, the base of the spring, that goes at the bottom. And this spring pretty much just slides back in there like that. And then what you can do is just put it back in the hole. All right. It's hard to do it one hand, but there we go. Slide it back in there and make sure it's going up and down. All right, now back to getting these out. What you can do is you can flip this upside down and you have all these ports here. All right, now you don't want to get something too wide that you jam in there that you score up these ports. These are already scored pretty bad. This is it from the damaged one. But what I do is I take... And you shouldn't need a lot of pressure. I take a little tiny, this little tiny screwdriver here, and it's going to go down right in there. I don't know if I can do this with one hand. Yeah, some of these springs are going to fall out, but that's okay. All right, so I'll flip this upside down, and I will tap. And there it goes. All right, that just unfreed that one. So let's pull that out of there. Now that port there... It's hard to see with this camera, and I apologize. But you want to look down inside of there and see. Um, and I can see definitely some crud in there and some scoring. Now, you may be able to clean that out. Get yourself something thin, a screwdriver with a rag on it, some carbon choke cleaner. Run that through there first and see if the... Clean it up and then examine the walls. If they're really heavily scored, then it's going to be a problem. Um, but if it's not, maybe there was just some dirt that was stuck in there and maybe you caught the problem early enough to where it didn't damage it and you could just slide it back in there after you clean it and it should go up and down like that. Okay, you can put a little bit of lubrication in there when you're putting these back in and uh, just make sure that it's going to go up and down, pump it a couple of times and make sure it's not going to seize up again. And um, that's it. And you may be able to get them all operating again and that might solve your problem. The last thing, well, actually, let me show you this one first. This particular one, look at this one. All of them are seized, completely jammed down in there, but this one. And that was doing absolutely nothing. It was just spinning in there, and these were not doing anything. They're just seized up in there. So that tells me there was a lot of crap inside of this motor. All right, but what that rides on, I'll show you here. Okay, let's go over to the, the newer one. All right, it, it faces down, okay? So, when this, let's see if I can get some good light. See how that pivots back and forth like that? Well, that's what I was showing you with my hand earlier. That's going to pivot, and it's going to push those springs up and down, okay? And that's going to that's gonna build your pressure. Without those springs going up and down, well then you're messing up the whole cycle and the whole science of it, and you're going to either A, lose pressure, or you're not going to have any at all. All right. So after you have examined this piece, and whether yours was good or bad or whatever, you're moving forward now. Now here, if you get yourself a little pick, you got a bearing here. You just get a little pick, and you can just pull this up. Just like that. Just check this out. Make sure it's not scored. Clean it. If there was debris or any any uh, metal shavings or anything on it, you want to make sure you clean all that off before you put it back in. All right. This side has a little groove. That's where your bearings ride in. This little racetrack right here. All right. So that's how you know when you put it back in. You see the bearing? 
that groove you're going to flip because it's going to ride on those bearings. Now this you can examine and also make sure your, your swash plate is going back and forth because if this ain't rocking then that means it's not working with this and that means you're not getting the pressure and the uh, flow that you need. So this one seems to be rocking okay and our bearing they all seem to be good. Now you can further examine going to be in you can pull that out with a pick that just slides right out all right we'll set that aside you can clean that too now down here at the bottom now this swash plate if you take your pick you'll be able to pull that straight up the tricky part is see this little uh let me try to get in better light all right can you see this little notched out it's almost like half of a square here well that's riding on this right here there's a little tiny square it looks like a nut down there that will slide onto this shaft and if you pull this if you pull this out you will see it and putting this back in can be a little bit tricky because you gotta kind of position this over top of that little square nut down there and it will drop right down on but I'm not gonna pull that up because I don't feel like fighting to put that back in there but this seems to be operating okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray some carbon choke cleaner in here or something. Get some air. If there's anything in there, I will turn this uh, sideways. And I will blow some air and stuff in there and try to get any debris that's out of there. Alright. But if this is moving freely for you and your bearing seems to be okay, don't mess with that. You don't need to go any deeper than that. Alright. So... I'm going to set these back in here for now. They just drop right in place just like that, see? And that should spin freely. And that's basically, that's basically it. Those are some of the problems you want to look for. Um, and, and hopefully this will help save you $600 or so on replacing these parts. All right? But that's really it. It's really simple to take these apart, pull out each piece one at a time, Make sure they're operating correctly. And if one of them is so bad that you can't fix it, just order that piece. I know on Amazon they do sell rebuild kits for these. <clears throat> it's going to be a lot less cheaper than buying a whole new pump in general. Because you don't need to buy the whole case. You don't need all that stuff. 90% of the time it might just be one little thing inside that you need. Um, but with if, if you caught the problem early enough... You'll be able to unfree a lot of these mechanisms, clean them up, and put it back together, and your unit should be working fine. And start to finish, ripping these apart and cleaning them should take you a half hour at the most and put it back together. Um, I think it's worth the time to do that before you just go buy a whole new pump. Uh, hit subscribe below and give me a thumbs up. I do these videos daily, and I'm about 200 subscribers away from reaching my 1,000 subscribers. So if you can do that for me, just because I took the time out to possibly help you, hopefully I did, I would really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time.